Buy this, achieve more, constant growth is progress. From the moment we're born, we're immersed in the language of capitalism. Competition, innovation, the promise that if you work hard enough, you too can have a piece of the pie. For many, this system has delivered undeniable technological advancements and a standard of living unimaginable to our ancestors. Yet something feels increasingly off balance, wrong. The gap between those with unimaginable wealth and those struggling to meet basic needs widens by the day. We see news reports of environmental catastrophes linked to the constant need for more production, more consumption, more profit, at seemingly any cost. Workers, the very people creating this wealth, often feel powerless, exploited, like tiny cogs in a massive machine that doesn't care about their well-being. We're told there's no other way, that capitalism is synonymous with human nature itself. But what if that's a convenient lie, one that benefits those already at the very top of this system? Economists, philosophers, and ordinary people seeking a more just way of organizing society have long proposed alternatives. These ideas are often dismissed as unrealistic or dangerous. But in a world facing such profound crises, don't we owe it to ourselves to explore them, to ask the difficult, unsettling questions about the very foundation our economies are built upon. Let's be clear. Capitalism has transformed the world in undeniable ways. Technological leaps that would have seemed like magic to our ancestors are now commonplace. The efficiency of mass production for a time made goods more affordable, raising the standard of living for many, though not equally across the globe. Competition can, in theory, incentivize companies to constantly innovate and improve, it promises that individual ambition, channeled through the mechanisms of the free market, leads to progress that ultimately benefits all of society, an invisible hand guiding the collective good. But there's a growing, undeniable disk between that optimistic promise and the stark realities of our time. Wealth isn't trickling down, it's being ruthlessly concentrated at the top, leaving millions struggling to meet basic needs even as they work harder than ever. Corporate profits soar, but those gains rarely translate into meaningful wage increases for the people whose labor creates that wealth. Unions, a vital counterbalance, have been systematically weakened. Outsourcing and maximizing short-term shareholder profits take priority over investing in the well-being of workers and often their communities. We're told that relentless economic expansion is not only possible but vital. Yet, the very planet that sustains us is flashing urgent warning signs. Climate change, fueled by our addiction to consumption, threatens to upend the delicate systems that make human life, especially for the most marginalized, possible. Pollution chokes our cities, clean water becomes an increasingly precious commodity, and the very idea of infinite growth on a finite planet reveals itself as a dangerous delusion. These aren't just abstract theories or the complaints of those who simply refuse to participate in the system. From Karl Marx, with his focus on capitalism's inherent class struggle, to modern-day environmental economists pointing out that our current model depends on externalizing costs it never truly pays, critiques have existed for as long as capitalism itself. Yet, these critiques are often dismissed as radical or outdated, treated as threats to the status quo rather than invitations to a necessary and deeply uncomfortable conversation. Can minor reforms address these deep-rooted problems? Can we greenwash a system based on endless exploitation of resources? Or is it time to have the courage to ask much harder questions about the fundamental assumptions upon which our world is currently built? The word alternative often makes us nervous. It implies venturing into the unknown the potentially risky. But when it comes to how we organize one of the most fundamental aspects of human existence, how we produce and distribute the resources needed for survival and thriving, perhaps a willingness to step outside the familiar is exactly what's needed. Let's take a brief look at a few of the alternatives that challenge the dominance of capitalism. Socialism. It's vital to recognize this isn't a single monolithic ideology, but more of a spectrum. On one end, we have democratic socialism, which still operates within a market economy, but with significantly stronger regulations, high taxes on the wealthy to fund robust social programs, and an emphasis on ensuring everyone has access to necessities like healthcare, education, and a living wage. 
The more radical strain, communism, envisions a society where the means of production are collectively owned and controlled, not by private corporations, driven by the profit motive. The central focus is on reducing extreme inequality and giving workers more power over the decisions that directly affect their lives. Anarchism. Perhaps the most radical departure from the systems we're familiar with, anarchism rejects the very idea of a centralized state. Instead, it envisions small-scale, self-governing communities where decisions are made through direct democracy and cooperation. Anarchist thought critiques all forms of hierarchy, emphasizing mutual aid and solidarity rather than competition as the organizing principles of society. While often dismissed as purely theoretical, anarchist-inspired communities do exist, challenging us to think outside traditional power structures. Cooperative models. This approach offers a pragmatic glimpse of an alternative functioning within our present-day capitalist world. Instead of a profit-driven, owner-shareholder model, cooperative businesses are owned and democratically controlled by their workers. Decisions are made with the well-being of both the members and their local communities in mind, fostering a far less exploitative, more equitable relationship between labor, enterprise, and place. Cooperatives also extend beyond businesses to models of community-owned housing, food production, and locally controlled economies focused on meeting needs sustainably. These are just a few of many possible visions for a world where human flourishing, social justice, and the health of our planet might take priority over the endless pursuit of individual profit. But before we dismiss them outright, let's address some of the challenges and complexities we cannot ignore. It's crucial to acknowledge the complexities within these challenges. It's easy for those invested in maintaining the status quo to seize on the negative examples and imperfections to dismiss these ideas altogether. Yet haven't we seen negative examples under our current dominant system? Corruption, exploitation, and a tendency towards concentrated power exist across various economic models. The question then isn't whether perfection is attainable, but whether different systems might incentivize or suppress our best and worst tendencies. Think about scaling. Can the principles behind successful worker-owned cooperatives, fostering a sense of shared ownership and responsibility, be expanded while avoiding the rigid bureaucracy that often cripples large-scale systems? Are there hybrid models where essential services prioritize social good while other sectors are left to a more market-driven approach? We have a tendency to think in either-or extremes, but perhaps the wisest solutions exist in less ideologically rigid spaces. Then there's the thorniest question of all. What if those who claim capitalism simply mirrors inescapable truths about human nature are correct? Can we construct any system that accounts for, even channels, our self-interest without leading to rampant inequality? Or are there systems that might incentivize collaboration and foster the understanding that individual well-being is inextricably linked to a thriving society as a whole? This spills over into philosophical territory. Are humans fundamentally self-serving? Or do we also possess deep capacities for empathy, community, and a sense of responsibility beyond ourselves? Examining these alternative economic philosophies isn't about finding a neatly packaged solution to all the complex problems we face. It's about exercising a muscle that often atrophies in a world that tells us there's only one way of doing things. The capacity to imagine a different and potentially better way of organizing our collective existence. These ideas demand we look beyond the familiar, the comfortable. Is the constant pursuit of more a recipe for perpetual discontent? both individually and for our planet, or can true fulfillment be found in a system valuing enough with fair distribution prioritizing genuine need? Can we move away from economies built on extracting maximum profit, regardless of social and environmental cost, towards a model where success is measured in well-being, justice, and the capacity for future generations to not just survive, but thrive? We may not have all the answers, and even the most well-intentioned attempts at something radically new will likely encounter unforeseen obstacles. But the willingness to ask the questions, to think critically about the limitations and injustices baked into our current system, is a powerful act of resistance against the kind of cynicism that assures us nothing better is possible. True progress may demand we set out into the unknown, 
guided by the principles of a more equitable, sustainable, and truly humane world.